The new police oversight board for the city of Albuquerque held its first meeting this week. The new board was created to strengthen civilian oversight of the police, which was an issue identified by the Department of Justice in its report on APD last year. It replaces the former police oversight commission and our producer Sarah Gustavus sat down with two community members who will serve on the board and a staff member who will support their work. I'm here at the table today with Leonard Waits from the Police Oversight Board, also Joanne Fine, and Robin Hammer, Acting Executive Director. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. You're welcome. Leonard, I'd like to start with you. Why did you join the Police Oversight Board? Why did you throw your name in for this position? Well, first of all, I, I served on the Police Oversight Task Force, and uh, we were tasked to rewrite the um, SOP, which is the uh, standard operating procedure for this board, uh, for the new, new board. And uh, I put my name in the hat because I, I wanted to continue that work. I think it was important work. We did a, I think we did an excellent job, and uh, that was one of the main reasons I did it. What do you think you bring to this position that it's going to, the perspective that you bring that people might be interested in? Well, uh, I think common sense. I think if we common sense things, uh, I think we'll be successful. Yeah. And Joanne, what about you? Why did you put your name in for the board? Well, I'm recently retired in the last couple of years from United Way, and at, in my job at United Way, um, I dealt with the communications, and part of that was partnerships with the police department uh, to create the Family Advocacy Center and those kinds of things, as, as well as some business um, adventures, I should say, adventures as well. Um, in any case, um, it made me interested in how the police work and uh, how important it is for there to be partnerships with the community. And I think that that's something that can be helpful moving forward, um, uh, resolving some of the troubles that we've seen here lately. Mm. There's two of you here today. There are nine members on the board, so everyone's going to have a different background, different perspective. Uh, when you met your board members uh, for the first time and you guys started to get to know each other, do you feel like the board's representing Albuquerque, representing the community? Well, first of all, I, I think the... Uh the people that selected the board did an outstanding job. It's a really diverse group of people and uh, with outstanding backgrounds, and I, I think we'll have the opportunity to do some positive things, you know. But to answer your question, when I, I haven't met all of them yet, uh, the ones I have. We've, uh, I think we're going to do very well together. Um, I was impressed by how many, um, how diverse the group of people was um, and is. Um, I think there's a lot of talent that will come uh, be valuable in this process. Robin, how is the Police Oversight Board different than the Police Oversight Commission, which we had before? And this change comes from the DOJ investigation and report into APD in Albuquerque. What's going to be different now? Well, what, well, the, the, the primary change ca came with, uh, after Leonard's task force that he was a member of, which was created by city council. They created a new ordinance, which was adopted by the city in the fall of last year. It was signed by the mayor early October. Um, and it was uh, in response to concerns about the Police Oversight Commission's activities before and uh, concerns from the community that perhaps the, the former Police Oversight Commission didn't look at systemic issues as, as much as the, as the community demanded or, or, or wished. And so with that in mind and, and after re receiving recommendations from the Police Oversight Task Force, City Council um, drafted an ordinance which was signed by the mayor, which uh, basically took the uh, former commissioners, which were appointed individually by each uh, city councilor, nine commissioners, um, which were rep supposed to be representatives of each council district, and, and broadened that out to select nine individuals at large to represent the entire city, regardless of their residency in, in, in any city council district. So the, the, the current police oversight board, the new members, do have to live in the city of Albuquerque, but they're not limited by their, just their city council district. And by opening it out to be beyond uh, just representation of a geographic area, it, the, the, the persons who selected the board members could look at the varieties of experience and strengths that, that uh, individual, nine individuals could bring collectively to a group. Now what are they looking at? How do they get information on um, there's complaints from individual citizens in the community? And then what happens next? What, how does it get to the board? Uh, 
any individual from anywhere, you don't have to live in the city of Albuquerque, you may file a complaint against an Albuquerque police officer. And you can file those complaints many different ways, one of which is to go on our website and uh, there's a form there in which you can fill out as much information as you have or you can file a written complaint or uh, under the new settlement agreement, once it's implemented, we'll, oral complaints to any police officer will, will be taken by this agency. Um, once those complaints are received in the office, they're uh, assigned to a professional investigator, a city staff employee who investigates the matter and then um, gathers all the evidence and then that evidence and a recommendation is presented to the police oversight board for their approval. We've talked a lot out here on New Mexico and Focus about conflicts of interest, about relationships between different departments in the city. Is this board separate from APD physically, structurally? What do you want people to know about that? Well, it's very important for everyone to know that the police oversight board, uh, which is part of these, the overall civilian police oversight agency, the agency uh, does have uh, city employees who work for it, but none of those city employees are uh, APD employees. We're not housed in any, by ordinance, we, we cannot be housed anywhere where there's an APD uh, presence. And certainly we don't report to the chief of police and they're not in our chain of command. And one of the changes that um, the city council made when it drafted the, the revised or amended ordinance was that it be even more independent in that it's uh, structurally the mayor made a recommendation to um, the executive director formerly known as the independent review officer and the mayor's now out of the loop. So it's, it's the board gets to uh, hire and fire with the, the consent of city council, the, their executive director. Interesting. How, what do you think is the role of the board in restoring trust in the community that there is going to be oversight of APD? I think it's a very important. Uh, our role is not only to listen to the complaints, but to go out into the community and, you know, the community meetings and, and things like that and interact with those type of people and uh, I think that's one of the main things we're going to be doing is more or less advertising what we're doing you know and in and, and, and support of not only the citizens but the police department also. So. I think there's there's a bigger piece of this too and that is to take the complaints and look for trends um, and to look and see what can we learn um, about what's going on not just in this incident but but in overall, overall, are there trends? Are there policy recommendations we should make um, to the police department? Are there disciplinary actions we would recommend to the police department? And the ordinance carry, uh, covers all of that, those things. Um, so it is our charge not only to go complaint by complaint, but also to look for patterns of problems um, and to, to help to, to make recommendations to rectify those. APD and Albuquerque has been in the national headlines, national spotlight. Do you think that this oversight board could turn things around, could give people a different impression of Albuquerque if it's successful? I think it has to. I think it has to be transparent. The p process that we uh, engage has to be really transparent. Um, it has to talk to some of the, it's why the way the ordinance is written is so, um, it was attractive to me because it really is about systemic issues and saying what's, what's wrong and, and that kind of thing. I think light always makes bacteria go away. Mm -hmm. So I think that putting light on the situation is a good thing. Um, and, and listening, I think our job is to listen um, to what we're being told by many places, um, and citizens and, uh, and groups and, and everyone, and listen to what has to be said because unless people feel like they're heard, uh, you, you can't establish trust and trust is an important piece. If you're going out in the community, if people know that you're on this board, people have complaints about APD, it can be kind of emotional, kind of difficult. Spotlight may be on you. Did you think about that before you joined the board, about what that might be? I you? did, I did, um, and I'm okay with it. I, you know, I'm comfortable with going out and, and interacting with, you know, the community. Uh, so, yes, I, I thought about it prior to this, you know. What do you hope to accomplish on the board? One of the things that I, that's a priority to, to me is the the work that we did for, on the police oversight task force. I want to continue that work. I want to see that to become you know a real 
viable uh, entity, for a better choice of words. Uh, we did a lot of work, and it, I don't think they got the the accolades that they deserve, uh, but the work was done, and I think we need to continue that. And that, that's one of the main reasons. The other thing is that, and I probably told you this earlier, uh, in my com community when I was growing up, there was always that one person that, you know, if anything was happening, uh, he was always there. And his name was Fred Ward. And, uh, yeah. My role now is to be that Fred Ward. You know, I, it's my turn to, to fight for the community, fight for our rights. So that's my main reason for doing this. Joanne, change can take a long time. I'm sure you know that from your previous work, trying to address some systemic issues in the community. Um, any, any advice that you think you would share with other board members from, from that? Well, I think there's a lot for us to learn. And I think the important, and the ordinance to its credit, um, really puts a lot of training on us uh, to make sure we do have all the information that we possibly can garner uh, without becoming police officers ourselves, uh, but to learn as best we can uh, what it's like to be in those shoes. But also, I think that our own life experience brings, brings with it um, what it's like to be a community member. So I think the marriage of those two things will be valuable. Robin, any misconceptions or myths that you think we need to inform people about as this board begins to meet and begins their work this year? Um, I would hope that people who are members of the community uh, know that their complaints are taken seriously. I think that there, was some, there are some concerns in the community that this board, the former commission had no power, had no authority to do anything, when in fact what as Joanne and Leonard have said, this board can really look at systemic issues and try to address and put trend, uh, light on the problems that face of the interaction between Albuquerque Police Department and the community of Albuquerque. And so this board does have that ability to, to look at problems uh, and make sure that, that citizens have an ability to voice their concerns about day-to-day -day interactions with the police, both good and both bad. And I want to get back to what you said about long term because it is going to take a while. You know, you can't just wave a magic wand and say, okay, trust me now. You know, that's not going to work. This, you know, trust is built based on doing the right thing for the right reasons every day for a long time. And unless you do that and are prepared to stay the course to do that for a long period of time, you're not going to get that done. And so my experience at United Way is that you have to you know, deal with today, but you have to plan for the long term. And that's what this is. And I think that uh, we've got the right people on the bus to do it. I agree. All right. Well, we'll be checking in with you again as, as things progress. Thank you so much for joining us now to give us a picture of what's happening right now as the board begins to meet. Thank, Thank you. you.